Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending today. Welcome to our webinar hosted by CanFit Pro. Our webinar today is titled, I've Just Become Certified, Now What? And our webinar today is actually being presented by Natalie Lacombe. Natalie has over 15 years experience in the fitness industry and degrees in psychology and exercise science. She's also our Director of Membership and Certification at CanFit Pro and an international presenter. I would also like to, just before I let Natalie come on um, onto the mic, I just wanted to cover a couple of things before we head into the webinar today. And um, that's just in regards to where you'll find the webinar available afterwards. We are recording it, and it will be available for you to view and download on our website within about two to three days. And as well, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type those into the question box and send those off. Um, we will be, uh, Natalie will be taking a look at those throughout the webinar and possibly answering throughout as well as towards the end of the webinar. We will try to get to as many questions as possible, um, but knowing that there's a large volume of people on this webinar, we may not get to all those questions. But uh, if we don't, we do have an email at the end of this webinar that uh, if there is something you really want to know or you have a question about, you can send an email uh, directly to that email address and uh, we should be able to help you out from there. So again, thank you for attending today. Um, we're really glad you joined us. I want to say a welcome and thank you very much to Natalie for presenting today and for being here with us. Natalie's actually not even in the province of Ontario today, so she's off and doing things um, in other locations, but um, she's presenting for us today. And thank you very much and welcome, Natalie. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Erin. Hi, everyone. I am indeed, I'm in Halifax, enjoying some quite chilly weather, but a beautiful sunny day here. So we're in the process of training some new pro trainers that are joining our certification team. So it's very exciting for me to be here. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining in. Um, the first thing I can tell you is that you've started from the very best step you can. So if you become certified, um, you've got the best foot in the door in the fitness industry, and I'm going to give you a few tricks of the trade um, to know what to do from now on. So the first question that you might be asking yourselves is, where do I find work? So I'm going to go over a few opportunities that. Um, and like Aaron said, feel free to type in some questions and it will be my pleasure to try and answer those as best as possible. Um, if not, then we'll give you some contact information afterwards if you want to follow up with anything that's a bit more specific. So the thing I can talk to you about um, is fitness clubs and facilities. And these can be paid or these can be volunteer. So you've got a few options when it comes to that. Um, the first thing I'm going to suggest you do is that you search online in your area for what's available. I think the large chains and the YMCA's most people know about, but there might be some large, some smaller clubs in your area as well as some community centers that you might not have thought of um, and those might be a great place for you to start. So there's advantages and disadvantages to working for the larger clubs as well as the smaller ones and I can try and go over a couple of those for you if you like thing is, is if you're working for a large club or YMCA, oftentimes you'll have the opportunity to be mentored when you begin. You'll go into something that's very structured, that's a well-oiled machine, that's got a lot in terms of recruitment opportunities and mentoring and team teaching or, or personal training with someone that's already on staff and getting gaining some experience in terms of that. Um, and the good news is, is if you're a trainer, oftentimes those large clubs or IMCAs will actually sell some of the personal training sessions for you and you'll just need to start off with some brand new clients. They usually have some starter packages to get you warmed up at the beginning before you start doing a lot of program design and periodization. And the same thing when it comes to teaching fitness classes, they'll bring you into their structure and they'll actually get you started with a simple class on the schedule and maybe have a lot of supervision for that at the beginning. So you get those opportunities in terms of club support and whatnot. There's advantages to working with the community, community centers and smaller clubs and those are you'll probably have a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more freedom in terms of scheduling, um, type of classes, type of programs you offer your clients, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But you might need to run your own business yourself within those clubs or community centers. 
the great part of working for community centers is sometimes the rate of pay is actually quite good. Um, and what they'll do is they'll put you onto a schedule for a long period of time. And you'll get to start with people whose expectations sometimes are a little bit different than very expensive clubs or chains within your area. So it's a bit of a safer place to start sometimes. And that can be one of the advantages for that. Um, but like I said, I suggest that you actually go online, drive around, ask around, look at all those different places, and see what it is that they're looking for. And that when we're done in terms of this slide of the questions to ask those people. Um, some other opportunities that I listed are in-home or common space training. So in terms of in-home, you've got a couple of options, yours, or theirs. Most of the time they will be a higher rate when it comes to that, especially if your personal training act or personal trainer, excuse me, actually driving to and getting to um, the client's homes, the rate per hour will normally be higher for that because you're giving that much more of an exclusive service to those clients. Same thing when it comes to your home because you're offering them something as, again, that's more exclusive. So you probably need to set something up for yourself in terms of that. So that's another option that you can do. And then common space training like condo buildings, condominium buildings. There can be great opportunities and you can ask them around. I find that it's really interesting when it comes to those common types of spaces that buildings will add them into their facilities with a bit of a um, if you build it they will come mentality which um, unfortunately is actually really not the case. So those end up being really underutilized in most facilities. So you can actually come in and talk to the building manager or talk to the people that are offering those services, kind of like a social committee type of program and offer your services because oftentimes, as I mentioned, they spent a lot of money on pretty good equipment and really using a lot of high end square footage in their buildings but they're not necessarily utilized. So you can come in and do some personal training, some small group training, or maybe even some classes in terms of that. So that can be a great opportunity for you. And the third one on that list is small businesses. So I gave the example of boot camp companies. There's quite a few around the entire country that offer these kinds of programs. Um, and it's an opportunity for you to do something different that you might do within the confines of a fitness facility. So there's a lot in terms of boot camps, outdoor training opportunities, walking clubs, even small personal training businesses that actually go to people's homes or again have a little personal training studio in which you can actually start working and doing that. So the great thing about those as I mentioned is it gives a lot of variety to what you offer. So open yourself up to different types of opportunities and different types of clients and participants than what you would see in a club setting. So I think what I'd, I'd love for you guys to know is that there's, there's the big ones and then the small ones and it's up to you to kind of decide what's best for you. Maybe try out a couple at the beginning and see what's the best fit. You want to find out what they offer. You want to find out what they require. Um, and I'll get to that on the next slide when I talk about marketing myself. So those are your opportunities at the beginning and even later on to be able to develop it. Depending on whether or not you want to work for a big company or big business or completely working on your own, that said, you'll need to be running the business yourself if you're doing it on your own. And then there's everything in between in terms of that different opportunities as to where you can find work. The next thing I want to talk about, which is really, really important, is how to market yourself. So the first thing I'm going to add to that, or the first thing I'm going to lend to that, is focus on what you do best. So what sets you apart? What are you great at? What are you passionate about? What is your, what we call USP? What is your unique selling position? What makes you a great commodity? Why do they need to hire you to train their clients or hire you to teach classes within their facility? Um, you need Natalie, yes, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. I just noticed we're getting a lot of uh, hands up and questions about um, not being able to hear anything, that they cannot hear the audio. So I'm just um, checking to make sure uh, that everything is set up technically. I know... Um, 
you are off. You are not on mute because I can hear you. So everybody else should, should uh, also should be able to hear you. Um, mm. Kenny, I'm just asking actually if anybody out there is having technical uh, difficulties in terms of actually hearing Natalie. If you can just raise your hand in the question section. Uh, I just want to see if it's just uh, isolated to a few or if it's for everybody. That would be great. So if we can take a minute to do that. If you are having those technical technical difficulties, if you can raise, because I'm getting a lot of um, quite, I just can't keep up with now in terms of just, uh, they're saying they can see the slides, but can't hear a voice. Anybody, I'm just wanting to make sure is, um, is can people hear me? There's a few hands raised, or a few questions put in, a few hands raised. Everybody, if you can just be patient. If everybody, if somebody could type in, um, if I, I'm going to put the question out there to everybody. Can everybody hear me? If people can just type in yes into their question box and send off, I'd just like to be able to know and at least hear me. not getting anybody's responses there. Lee, can I just ask you, um, be able to unplug the headset and um, do, are, I'm actually going to try a test through your, your computer. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, so I just got a, a BBM from someone on staff saying that it says the webinar will begin shortly. So have we clicked on begin webinar? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Actually done that. Okay, one second. I'm going to try that again, okay? Okay. Can you go back to your first screen, to your first slide? Yes. So Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Everybody, uh, we seem to have had some technical difficulties with the starting of the broadcast, um, so I apologize for that. Um, Natalie, sorry about that. Um, it looks <laughs> okay. as though it popped back into a hold mode there, so um, I do apologize. So it looks like everybody can now uh, hear me. I'm getting... Uh, the thanks all is fine so Yay. thank you very much thanks Myra <laughs> um, so we're good I do apologize for that as in the world of technology we can only cross our fingers and hope sometimes um, so welcome everybody I uh, will start this again and uh, just a quick introduction uh, Natalie Lacombe is here with us today and being very patient thank you Natalie and thank you to everybody else on board who's been so patient um, Natalie is here to present for us um, on the webinar day, uh, she is our director of membership and certification for CanFit Pro, and also an international presenter. And we're very happy and lucky to have her today. Thank you very much, Natalie. And I will let you take it away. <laughs> okay, I can do it in French and get it done a lot yes. faster. Everyone, <laughs> should we ask that question? See if everybody wants me to exactly. again. So this is not going to feel like deja vu at all, everyone. It'll be great, and I'm so excited to do this again. So here we go. Um, the reason that we decided to put this through was because we know how sometimes people struggle when they first begin in the fitness industry, and I know that you've taken the most important step, which is getting certified. So you've now got the foot in the door, and over the next few minutes, I'll do my best to try and give you a few tricks of the trade to get you started right, um, to build your reputation, and to have a really successful career from then on. 
first question that you might be asking yourself is where do I find work? So I've got three categories here and I'll go over the advantages and disadvantages of all of them and you guys feel free to put in some questions there. Aaron will either send them my way, will respond directly or if, um, if you need to you can go ahead and follow up with us after the webinar. We'll post an email address that you can send directly our way because at CanFit Pro we're very dedicated to help you have the best career possible within the fitness industry. This category is fitness clubs and facilities, and I wrote there paid or volunteer. Now, you might be thinking that you've spent a lot of time and a lot of money um, getting certified, and you want to be able to make that up and start getting remunerated right away, but, but there are some opportunities which might give you um, seem like volunteering or actually be volunteering at the beginning, but they'll give you that much of a head start within the fitness industry. So you've got a couple of options, one of them being the larger chains and the YMCAs. Um, these I'm sure you've seen around and you know really well which ones they are in your community, but there's also some different options. They can be smaller clubs, they can be community centers, there's a lot of that out there and over to some of the disadvantages and advantages of both in just a sec. Something else you can look into is in-home or common space training. So in-home, be it yours or theirs, are a couple of opportunities for you that you can look into, as well as common space training. What I mean by that are the workout or fitness rooms in condominium buildings, um, in corporate settings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What happens oftentimes is that the people who build these these facilities or build these condos will put a fair amount of time and square footage and money into creating a fitness area, um, but they're kind of in the build it and they will come mentality. And the fact is, is unless people have some sort of coaching, supervision, or motivation, they might not use them. So there's great opportunities for you to do that. Into homes, you can either set something up within your own home. This might be more likely something in terms of personal training or maybe small group training. And there, in terms of their home, again, you can actually have a couple of people get together or do some personal training in terms of that. A third category is small businesses. So I gave the example of boot camp programs, which exist pretty much everywhere in the country now, mostly in um, the seasons that are a little bit more easy to spend some time outside, but some of them actually run year-round. Um, so you've got a lot of those boot camps. You've got um, outdoor training opportunities. You've got walking clubs, and you've got small personal training businesses that will actually hire a group of trainers and instructors to go to people's homes and run the programs for them. So advantages and disadvantages of either. So fitness clubs and facilities, you'll actually be able to um, have a lot of support from the get-go. So these are well-oiled machines, they've been around for a long time, they'll possibly give you some someone to mentor you, if you're teaching classes they might give you someone to team teach with in the beginning, you'll come into a very structured environment through the fitness, the larger fitness clubs and the YMCA's that have been doing this for years and years and years and you'll pop into that system and be able to be mentored and grow with a team of instructors or a team of trainers. So that can be really advantageous as well as other benefits that are a little bit more fringe in being part of a place that does a lot in terms of investing for selling memberships, selling personal training, and really focusing on the fantastic programs that they have for group fitness. The smaller clubs and facilities and smaller businesses will give you different kinds of advantages and opportunities. For example, you might have a little bit more flexibility and freedom in terms of programming, scheduling, class design, periodization, etc. However, since someone else isn't necessarily running the business for you, that means you'll have to do it for yourself. And some of us in fitness are great at that, most of us not so much. Most of us focus on what it is that we do best, which is programming and creating movement patterns and creating passion and fun and motivation within what we do in fitness. The business side of it isn't always our forte. So maybe that's something that you feel you can be really good at and you'll set up yourself. Maybe you'd rather have a club or facility do that for you and you just focus on what you do best. So you've got a couple of opportunities when it comes to that. What I suggest is that you get online or you get in your car or you get in your sneakers and you get around your community and you find out what's out there. 
ask them what they're looking for. Ask them what they require of staff that they hire. Do they require certified staff? If so, then you're probably at the right place. If they're not so focused on certification and it's something that you've invested in, then maybe it's not a place that holds the same values when it comes to standards as you do. Find out what their rate of pay is. Find out what their expectations are. When you teach for them, is there a minimum number of classes a week that you have to teach? When you're training for them, is there a minimum number of clients or hours that you need to put into that club. Do they require exclusivity? How far in advance do you need to help find someone to sub your classes? What's their cancellation policy for personal training? These are things you need to know to be able to make the best decision for yourself and eventually for your clients and participants. So that's first thing that we can look into. Second one will be, how do I market myself? What I'm going to recommend be a, before anything else is that you focus on what you do best, what sets you apart. What is your, what we call USP, unique selling position? What makes you different than all the other trainers and all the other instructors? Is that something in your education? Is that something in your personality? Is that something in who you want to work with? Is that something that you've specialized in? A particular type of client or participant that you really want to focus on? What makes you different and special and ultimately hireable and someone that they'll want to invest in in terms of time as well as pay? I'm going to suggest that you also be very careful of becoming a jack of all trades. Um, and the second part to that is a master of none. I know what the fitness industry is like right now, and they are, I'm going to say, almost desperate for staff, whether it comes for to instructors or whether it comes to trainers. More and more people are involved in the fitness industry now, and there's still a pretty high turnover of staff. So if you teach classes, if you've just done your FIS and you're two weeks out of your course, someone might ask you to teach three Zumba classes, a boot camp, a yoga, a high-low, a step, and some sort of a muscle conditioning class. Um, whether or not you feel prepared to do that from the get-go is what the most important question is. It's really tempting in the beginning to take anything that comes our way, to take any client, a teenager, an older adult, someone who's pregnant, someone who has injuries, but remember what you do best, remember your code of ethics, remember your standards of practice, and remember that we are reputation-based industry. Be as good as your last class and you're only as good as your last personal training session. So if you're taking on too much, whether it be time or variety, that will significantly affect how your career goes on for men. So try and focus on what it is that you do best once again else in terms of marketing yourself, I would suggest that you utilize social media. So have you identified yourself as a certified fitness professional? And I hope so. If you're on this call, it means that you are one. Um, so you are a certified fitness professional, and that's how you should identify yourself, whether it be through classic forms of marketing, so um, business cards, brochures, pamphlets, etc. Word of mouth is big in our industry, but also in terms of social media. Put in Facebook when your next classes are. Making sure that you're part of LinkedIn as a fitness professional. Take advantage of all of that. The next part that I'm going to suggest is that you be willing to interview, audition, and give sample sessions. So they need to know what you do best, and you can go ahead and if you're a little bit weary about putting you on the schedule, say, may I team teach with an instructor that's here already? Can I give a sample class to your staff? Can I give a sample personal training session to you? Don't be afraid to give out some freebies at the beginning um, and be very well prepared for them because that's when they're going to see what you do best. So it's not just interviewing like it is in the business world. They need to see what you're all about and what your skill set is. Try and remember that owners and managers in the fitness industry sometimes have a really great understanding of what you do, sometimes not so much. Some owners are actually not from the fitness industry. They're investing in a club or a chain of clubs or a personal training studio because it is to them an investment. They may not be experts in fitness classes. They might not be experts in personal training. So you need to stand your ground as the expert and let them know how they can best utilize you. 
section will be establishing your revenue. Now, I'm telling you right now, I get this all the time. People always ask, how much should I charge? Now, um, having gone through the country and being in Halifax right now, I'm reminded that it's very, very different. So I've heard people in Moncton tell me that they get paid $12 an hour for a group exercise class, which is a travesty, by the way, to our poor friends in New Brunswick, and heard personal trainers in Toronto charge up to $150 an hour for an in-home personal training session. So there's a lot of variety to that. Um, make sure that it's something that you're comfortable with and understand that your hourly rate doesn't just compensate an hour. It also compensate the preparation time in terms of coming up with your movement patterns, coming up with your choreography, coming up with your programs for your personal training clients. Buying music, buying BOSU, buying equipment, all of that needs to be compensated in your hourly rate. So decide what's worthwhile just in terms of covering your gas to get this a fitness facility. You're missing a few pieces of the pie when it comes to that. You'll need to buy your own batteries. You'll need to get your own equipment. You'll need to get your own clothing and do all of that. So all of that needs to be compensated in some way, shape, or form in what you charge. The second part of that is remembering that this is not the kind of job that you could do 40 to 44 hours a week with clients or with participants. First of all, because as I mentioned, you need time to prep, you need time to recuperate your body, you need time to get a massage for heaven's sakes because you just can't teach 42 classes a week. Some of you want to do it right now. I can feel it through the webinar phone, but I'm telling you right now, it's not the best idea. So make sure that you schedule in some time to prep, to eat, to take care of yourself, to go to workshops, to take classes, and to keep doing your own personal training sessions because ultimately that's how you take care of yourself and that's what you enjoy. So a bit of a pitfall at the beginning that we want to get over scheduled and do so much, but make sure that you respect your own capabilities and your own capacities. So, um, other thing that you can look into when it comes to your revenue is kind of like the fringe benefits or other benefits that comes from working in those places. They offer um, medical insurance. Do they cover you with liability insurance? Are there other benefits to working for those that maybe the rate of pay is a little bit less, but for example, you don't have to sell personal training sessions. Maybe the rate of pay is a little bit less, but they supply you with music and batteries and footwear because they're branded or they're sponsored by a company. All of these need to be taken into account when you make that decision of re what revenue is best for you. Last part of this is protecting yourself. I know it's part of marketing yourself, but it's absolutely critically important that you get what you need in terms of liability insurance. And we actually at CanFit Pro have a member benefit provider called Stevenson and Hunt. And Stevenson and Hunt is one of the foremost um, liability insurance providers for the fitness industry at large in Canada. They they cover very large chains of clubs and they cover very small businesses and they cover everyone who's a member with CanFit Pro and certified. So you can go ahead and log on to our website and find out more about that. You need to make sure that you're covered. It's very inexpensive and it's everything from um, getting somebody who's injured, coming to your home for personal training, sexual harassment, etc., etc. Everything is covered in that. So make sure that you're protected when you go out and market yourself to the fitness industry. What's our third question? Specialize or diversify? Otherwise known as to be or not to be. So here's the thing with diversifying. You need to be aware of what the trends are. You've been teaching in the fitness industry for a couple of years and you don't know what Zumba is, you need to go take a class. If you've been personal training in fitness for a couple of years now and you who never try TRX, you need to go try a session with TRX, you need to go play with that equipment. You need to be aware of the trends, and I will repeat that, you need to be aware of the trends. Must you follow them? Must you take them all in? Must you become an expert in all of them? Absolutely not. But you need to know what's out there simply to be able to respond to the questions of your clients and participants and maybe bring something to them that will help them achieve their goals and make your sessions or, or, or um, classes that much more enjoyable.
it's important that you remain the expert and you know what's out there. So we, of course, at CanFit Pro offer our conferences throughout the country. Um, so we have 10 of those a year, our biggest one being in Toronto in August, but we offer them in all the provinces. And we also have this huge list of workshops and seminars and lectures on our calendar of events. So those are posted there with CECs that you can get from them, because once you're certified, you of course want to stay certified and stay marketable and be able to do that. But try and find out what's out there. Doesn't mean you do them all, but you've at least tried it. So if someone says, hey, should I buy a BOSU? You know what they're talking about. If someone says, hey, should I buy the P90X DVD? You say, sure, if you want to suffer. No, I'm just kidding. But you need to find out what those things are and beware so that you can better inform and better, and better diversify. In terms of specializing, um, you may or may not be aware of these certifications that are offered through CanFit Pro. At some point, you might decide that because older adults is the future, and we know this, so because older adults is the future of the fitness industry, and there's a lot of investment that's done in terms of that, and a lot of opportunities for you, you want to be able to specialize, and you've done some sessions at conferences and some workshops, but you really want to feel like you've got the quality and the knowledge and the skills to specialize in that training group and make yourself that much more marketable, then that could be a fantastic opportunity for you to look into. We've got our prepostnatal specialist, nutrition and wellness, which delves a little bit deeper than what we do, or actually a lot deeper than what we do in our PTS and our FIS older adults, mind-body, resistible, etc. So look into those, see if it's great for you. I wouldn't suggest do them all in the first three months because it's good to get your feet wet a little bit before you actually focus in on one of those. Lied with some information and this is what I think is really critical for all of us to know. So what does the future hold? Small group training and specialty training. So small group training and specialty training is kind of accessible for people that have done PTS as well as FIS because they can be done within a fitness studio with music and they can be done outside with three or four people in a boot camp type of setting. There's a lot that can be done in terms of that and it's really where we've seen the, the URSA reports of the International um, Health and Rac Racket Sport Association. We've seen the reports for years and years now that small group training is the biggest trend in the fitness industry. Why? Because it's more affordable than personal training and it makes it fun and accessible and people have one another to keep themselves accountable so it actually helps success rates when it comes to that specialty training the great thing about that is it can follow the trends so it can be I mean right now dance is really really hot so you could be teaching a ballroom dance class in terms of specialty training you can be teaching a for example Michelle Obama arms six-week program for specialty training you could do a a bridal boot camp type of program for that. So there's a lot out there. The pricing is more affordable and you can do these along with everything else that you do and actually make a fair amount of money at that because you do make the price affordable but you still make more than if it was just with one person or with a class that's included already in the membership that people pay at that facility. So to look into that, and it might be something that you've been wanting to try and do, and you're like, you know what, I'll do it one time, or I'll do it for four weeks. We've actually has, have a colleague that's doing the week before Halloween, doing a specialty class, and she's going to teach us how to do the entire thriller video in 90 minutes, and we're going to get out there looking like zombies, and it's going to be fantastic. So great opportunities for you guys that are out there point to this is the other side of the coin. Now, most of you, I assume, um, are focused right now on personal training or on group fitness and on teaching. I would love to invite you a few months from now to look at the other side of that coin. Um, personal training gives an opportunity for group fitness instructors to have a little bit or significantly less wear and tear on their bodies and actually maybe make this a full-time career and make this, and I hope you can see my hands on the side of my head doing my little quotation marks, making fitness their real job as opposed to something that they do part-time. Because as you can imagine, very difficult to teach 
40 classes a week and make a living off that. So P is a great opportunity for that, even if you focus at the beginning on small group training. For small trainers, group fitness is more accessible than ever. It's not aerobics anymore. It's not dance anymore. It's not just grapevines and five, six, seven, eights anymore. There's a lot involved in group fitness. Some of it, of course, is still focused in on dance, but a lot of it has to do with just utilizing music and the group fitness setting to create those amazing experiences that people will want to come back again and again and again. So even if you're thinking about teaching something that's boot camp related, but you want to be able to follow a beat and you want to be able to make it fun, then perhaps looking into the FIS is a great opportunity for you. And what better to sell your personal training sessions than be the hottest instructor on the schedule because you've just got an amazing skill so you become a walking billboard with that. That's something that i like for you guys to think about in the next few months once you're certified. The category is corporate fitness. So there's a lot of opportunities in that, whether they're built in already and you work for one of those organizations or you create it yourself. Um, same thing that kind of like what I talked about the condos in the beginning, a lot of businesses built in those facilities within their buildings um, and no one's coming because really it's about the structure and it's about the programming that makes those successful. So going in and ask around, and this is anybody you can ask around, so next Christmas party, next holiday get together, next family reunion, ask. Is there a fitness facility in your building? Do you know if your company offers corporate fitness programming? And then you can find out if there's an opportunity there for yourself. Even if it means you're doing lunch and learn classes um, to compensate for everything else that you're doing. So you go in and you talk about the benefits of great abs for posture. And you do a 45 minute lunch and learn, you make some money off that, it adds revenue to what you already do. So those are great opportunities. And the last one in terms of the future is age group focus. So whether it's teens, kids, older adults, etc., when in their 40s, whatever it'll be, if you focus on an age group and spend some time getting the education or getting the certification for that, you'll add a lot of years to your career because we know that those are the groups of segments of the population now that need us more than ever, especially kids and teens with the rate of obesity and the rate of diabetes. Um, they're not getting it from phys ed class anymore like some of us did when we were, when we were in school. They really need the support of the health and fitness industry and so we can tie in what we do with schools or with dance schools or whatnot and make a best friend with a gym teacher and see if they need your support in terms of that. Same thing when it comes to older adults. So I mentioned it before, but they have more time and more disposable income than a lot of other segments of the population, and they want to add life to the years and years to their life. So there's a lot to be done when it comes to older adults and a lot to be generated in terms of revenue. The great thing is, if you're a personal chair, and right now all your clients are early morning or evenings or weekends, some older adults, those that happen to be retired, don't have something booked already at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So you're able to create a schedule for yourself that's a little bit more um, e-handle and gives you that much more variety and gives you that much more energy. So those were the items that I wanted to talk about. Um, Erin, perhaps you have some questions that you want to send my way? Yes, thank you, Natalie. I um, actually have sent a, a few over in, uh, in your chat box, but um, I can go over those with you if you like, if you don't oh, see them sure. coming up. Here, let me uh, come down here. Yep. So, Charles from Lethbridge um, saying that it's very, is it 22 degrees, Charles, in Lethbridge? I heard it was really hot out there today. Commercial gyms don't allow you to help their clients with personal training on an independent basis. Is there any way of getting around that? Essentially, the clubs will do what the clubs want to do. So there's a few different ways that they will hire them. Um, getting around it, no. If that's their policy, then that's their policy, Charles. So it's perhaps that they need you to be on staff and therefore they need you to work full-time or part-time for them. That could be an opportunity. Some clubs will actually let you come in um, and bring in clients. They might very likely will have to be members at the facility, but they'll just ask you for a cut off the top, for example, like $10 a client. For 
for every client you come in, you charge what you want, but they need to get $10 for each of those sessions. Other clubs would charge you kind of like a rental fee and say per month, here's what we need to bring in. You can come in and bring in as many clients as you want, but very often they'll want you to actually, um, those clients will need to get a membership in that facility. If you want to do something completely different from that, then I would suggest that you, you look more into personal training studios because, or community centers because oftentimes they'll be a little bit more flexible when it comes to that. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, I got that. How would you recommend we find boot camps? Um, I would just put that through, um, through the web. I would just go ahead and do a Google search on the boot camps in your area. There are quite a few that are organized already, um, and there, I'm sure that there are within, within your, your neck of the woods. They have them all over the country, um, or you might want to start one yourself, but oftentimes you might just be walking by a park and you see a bunch of people working out, and that might actually be a boot camp with that. Um, great to hear from Julie saying that she's struggling with how many clients they can do um, with a PTS. So we do say that PTS, small group training, is there. I'm going to say more than anything else, that needs to be according to what you feel becomes group fitness. If you're teaching something to a group of people and they're all following along with what you're doing, then that's a little bit more group fitness. If music is involved, it's absolutely group fitness. It's absolutely not what you can do with PTS. But to be perfectly honest with you, um, I would follow more the code of ethics on that of what you are comfortable doing. If you're training five clients and you're actually doing small group training, you've got them doing what they're doing and it doesn't feel like you're leading a class, then that very much falls within the PTS. If you're leading a class through exercises and they're all doing the same thing and you're moving through it, then that resembles something more the leadership related and that's more covered within the FIS. So, um, Charles asking if there's a standard fee structure or is it independent on the city and, and the location. Um, it is independent. It completely varies from city to city and even if you're in a city or a suburb or the country or outlying areas, it's completely going to change and every club has what they require in that facility. So I would go ahead and make a few calls, Charles, and ask what the going rate is. Um, ask your per trainer. So hopefully when you've, once you've done the certification, you're still in touch with your pro trainer. Ask them what the going rate is for training in that area, and they'll be able to help you with that. What's the best information tool to keep updated on the latest trends, Mira asks. Well, that would be membership to CanFit Pro, Mira. So we're going to be able to help you when it comes to that and keep you updated on that. So you get our magazines on a monthly, on a bi-monthly basis um, when you're a member of CanFit Pro. You can log on to our website at any time and find that out. Um, but those would be, I would focus on professional organizations. Um, because that's what you'll need for that. That said, that's not what your clients will necessarily know about or your participants will necessarily know about. So go ahead and get a, a membership to a fitness magazine that's offered to the general public or look on what we offer consumers because that will give you a better idea of what your clients are asking. Uh, the next asks, is it easier to get started in a gym such as Good Life or you're doing it on your own at the beginning? Um, depends by what you mean by easier, Vanessa. Um, I explained in the beginning, there's advantages and disadvantages to all of that. If you are someone that is a very independent thinker and you want to do your own thing and you don't necessarily need the support of a club, then maybe doing it on your own is best. However, um, creating enough clientele for yourself as a trainer to develop a successful business will be much more difficult than tying into a club such as Good Life, to use your example, that will really support you and give you the structure at the beginning to develop your personal training business. So there's a lot involved with working in a big chain. There's meetings, there's expectations, there's goals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then again, that'll help give you the structure to get started. So I would say that working for a larger chain at the beginning probably easier because they've got everything set up already in terms of the business side of that. Um, 
So Sean is asking if there is such a thing as a universal certification. So um, there is not a universal certification. Uh, when it comes to Canada, most certifications will follow the same standards and whatnot. Um, when it comes to, so you give an example of Good Life, Good Life offers their own when it comes to that because most clubs will do some sort of an addition process to focus in on the culture, sales, periodization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but really, you have the, the the opportunity and you have the choice to get the certification that you want, and it's one that meets the needs of the fitness industry. So we know that we do that nationally. We actually know that we do that internationally also because our certifications have been mapped, for example, in Europe, have been mapped to Fitness Australia. Um, if you go to New Zealand, they know about Camp Fit Pro. So we know and we're very confident in terms of being the global leaders for that, that our certifications are can be quote unquote universal as you ask, but there isn't one standard. Um, there are registries around the world. We actually don't have one in Canada yet, but most Commonwealth countries do actually so, care asking, a good balance for pricing. If you want to be respected, not look like you're too cheap, but look like you make money. I know that's really tough, um, Karen, at the beginning. What I might do is offer packaging. That might be the simplest way to go because probably your one session rate will be more than what you're comfortable with, um, but your, you know, by 25 sessions or more will be just a little under what you want to make, and then you'll have the middle ground in terms of the beginning of for that. So you need to find out what the going rate is. Like I said, talk to your pro trainer about it, what the going rate is in your industry. Ask some clubs what it is, because remember that at clubs, they're also buying a membership, and on top of that, they're going to be spending money on personal training. So you need to figure out what's comfortable for you, and it's a rate that you don't cringe when you ask for it. So maybe for personal training, that's $30 an hour. Maybe it's $75 an hour. What you feel is respectable when it comes to that, um, and that you're not undercutting yourself. In case somebody says, well, what if I bring my friend in, and then you want to be able to offer them a referral rate or something like that. So set it up in such a way that you've got packages, and you can play with that a little um, let me see, Lisa's asking, how can spouses best help their partners in this pursuit when certified individual's income is essential to the household? Question. Lisa, I don't have a spouse. I was kind of done it on my own, um, and it's always been essential to my household. So essentially, you need to make the decision that if you're going to do this full time, you're able to cover what it is. I'm perfectly capable of covering my mortgage and my car payment and everything else in fitness, most of that because I balanced teaching classes, um, doing purse training, doing some small group training, going, doing corporate training, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and making sure that I had the income that was necessary in terms of that. I would say that what spouses need to be aware of is the fitness industry is not a five, nine to five industry. There's a lot um, of flexibility that's needed in terms of that. We work on evenings, we work on weekends, we work, etc. So um, some support and flexibility will probably be an understanding, will probably be what's best needed for spouse in terms of that. So is Campy Pro PTS, PTS recognized in the USA? Um, the U.S. isn't one big country when it comes to certifications. Every state actually has their own requirements. Some states will ask that you have an NCCA, which is um, kind of like the ISO of the industry requirement for that. We have not felt that that's necessary for us because that's focused primarily on repeatability, and at CanFit Pro, we know that our practical exam is a big part of that. But if any place that you want to work at in the States or anywhere else is not sure if CanFit Pro is what meets their needs, I've had plenty of members contact us directly, and we'll prepare something that goes over our competencies, our standards of practice, etc., and make sure that they're comfortable that you have everything you need to begin in the fitness industry. I'm still okay to take another couple questions, Erin. I have like two minutes, I think, right? Sure, yeah. And uh, if you like, I, I think you've got another couple on there, do you? I think so. Yeah, okay. So, 
Laura asked, what software management systems do I recommend for nutrition exercise programming? You know what? Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily, if you're comfortable with those software management systems, that would be great. Um, a lot of them have a lot of sales that, that's focused on them, and they'll lead people to buy a lot of products. That's not part of what we necessarily focus on in terms of our standards and our code of ethics. Um, I would say focus in on what you know best, which really is what you were certified on, which is focused primarily on Canada's food guide. And you can still give um, recommendations when it comes to that. I would do, um, I would recommend, Laura, that you do some research as to which ones you feel fit best within those confines and simply give options to your clients. But I wouldn't recommend that clients focus on one in particular because that's not what, um, what you've been trained to do as someone that's done PTS or FIS. Um, so one last one from Cheryl, I think. Do you think it's okay to do programs for people without doing a full fitness assessment? Some clients are just looking for an update, don't want to sign up for a whole lot of sessions. They just want a new program. Um, if those are repeating clients, then probably, depending on when the last time you've done a fitness assessment with them, um, but because of what industry um, is and because of the risks involved with any form of physical activity, I would say you need to do a fitness assessment and coming from my neck of the woods or my expertise, I would say you need to do some sort of preparedness when it comes to psychology of, of what their needs are to be able to coach them through that a little bit. So if they just want a program, if that client is new to you, then yes you would need to be able to assess what they are capable of doing before just giving them a program. Because really, they can get a program online, they can get a program in, you know, Shape Magazine. The reason they're coming to you is for that personalized treatment, and that comes from the assessment. Uh, John's asking, how many clients does the average personal training PT have? Um, a lot, because some of them do it regularly, and some of them come in from time to time. So I would say if you're rolling with about like 30 clients or so, some of them coming twice a week, some of them coming once a month, some of them coming in for programs, that's probably what you need for something that's regular, um, and you need to, uh, to keep posing it for that and keep developing it for that. So I think that's all the time we have for today. I think I got through all the questions. You guys see the email address that's up there. Thank you so much, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in your careers. Thank you very much, Natalie. We so appreciate you taking the time to do this and also answering all the questions that we had. And thank you, everybody, for posing those questions. Um, a lot of great information and material presented here today. So as Natalie mentioned, if there are any questions out there that we didn't get to, um, if you do want to send them along to the email address uh, that we provided there on that last screen, then please do so. Um, thank you, and we'll sign off, and hope everybody has a wonderful day, and Natalie, enjoy Halifax, or Nova Scotia. Thank you. <laughs> okay, take care. Food tonight. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay, take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.